Selma was different, but they were willing to kill, burn, bomb, destroy. So to ask artists and people to go into Selma was a whole different game. Harry Belafonte remembers the backdrop for a major flashpoint in the civil rights movement, the Selma to Montgomery marches in 1965. 50 miles had to be covered, but the real obstacle was hate. Not long after 600 marchers began on Sunday, March 7th, police brutally beat them, driving them back to Selma. When Bloody Sunday happened, and then Dr. King decided to march again after it. What was the mood? The mood was anger. The mood was rebellious. The question is, what do we do in the face of this kind of rage and this kind of mayhem? And the bottom line was that uh, we'll go back as often as necessary. Belafonte, enlisted by Dr. King to bring artists into the movement, convinced the likes of Joan Baez, Paul Newman, and Marlon Brando. But one of his first calls was to old friend and supporter, Tony Bennett. Well, I, I didn't want to do it. But then he told me what went down, what was going down, how uh, some blacks were burned, with, had gasoline thrown on them and they, they were burned. When I heard that, I said, I'll, I'll go with you. In that black-white divide, white faces would see your face. What do you think they thought about you? I thought you were a goddamn traitor. There was a spirit that we decided we're just going to march right through it, no matter what. After a federal court affirmed the right to march against the government and National Guard troops were ordered to protect marchers, protesters grew from 600 to 25,000. To rally the crowd, the artists came forth, but one problem. We found out we didn't have a stage, and uh, somebody came up with a, a, a funeral parlor. And how many, how many casks were there? I think the number was about 50, 50 to 80 caskets. 50 to 80 coffins? Yeah. How did you feel about that, that uh, the stage was built on coffins? Well. It, it, it was different. <laughs> <laughs> to say the least, yet singing on top of coffins may be apt metaphor for the marches, and they succeeded. Later that August, President Johnson signed the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Its purpose is not to divide, but to end divisions. Change that Bennett could feel even in the place that scared him the most. Many years later, I went back to Selma just as an engagement. And I was pretty concerned about it. I wonder how I'm gonna be treated. It changed, it changed that area. A, a, they were much more human, much more civilized about just accepting a good soul. It made me feel like it worked. It really worked. That march worked. But that work is unfinished, says Belafonte. And he wonders if today's black celebrities will take up the cause. You talked about the next generation or the current generation. And where's the new Harry Belafonte? Never before in the history of this country has there ever been a pool of celebrities more numerous than we have today. And never have the black people in this country been less spoken for by a community of celebrities that in the snap of a finger could say and do so much who have opted to do nothing. Why? They're so busy becoming hedonistic about the harvest and the material successes that they have received as a result of the success of that mission, that they have forgotten that there was ever a mission. His message is clear. The march is in the past, but the movement for fairness under law for all, for justice, must continue. Civil rights is a constant. It's never of the past. It's with you all the time. Every society, every millennium, every decade, is going to need its vigilant watchers of the democratic process.